The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live. Phenomenal women. Featuring in depth interviews with today's most inspiring women. Black Hollywood Live. Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, Phenomenal Women. This is my intro song. I love it. I love it. For all my guests. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead on, Elliot. Naturally. Sing it. <laughs> <laughs> the multi-talented Elliot English is with me today. Welcome to Phenomenal Woman. I'm glad to see you with us again today. And if you do not know who Miss Elliot English is, she is Aunt Helen from the Jamie Foxx Show. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I, I am. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, she thought, oh my. Yeah, we have it. actually been clowning the whole time <laughs> yes. before we went on air. So we've just been laughing. So please forgive us. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I'm sure the audience would like to know is what has life been like after the Jamie Foxx show? Oh. What have you been up to? Because I have my notes here. Yeah, You've been up to. Okay. So many things, but I'm gonna let you tell the story. Okay, let's see if I can remember. <laughs> I know it was a long time. Because it was a long, yeah, right. long time ago. As we said in a, in a show that I did in the theater, it was like a long, long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it feels. But let's see, right after the Jamie Foxx show, I believe I did Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh my goodness, Larry David, who was amazing. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful to do that show because we'd already done some improvisation on the Jamie Foxx show and we had it scripted as well. So a lot of the improv, though, that we did always made it to the camera. So it was easy for me to kind of step in and do this improvisational show with Larry David. Wow. So that was great. Playing Auntie Ray, who was completely opposite of Aunt Helen. Right. They <laughs> Auntie Ray would cuss you out right? and call it a day. Wow. <laughs> Where Auntie Ray, I mean, Aunt Helen was more lovable. Mm -hmm. You know, she was trying to, you know, encourage you with a loving manner. And I yes. think, you know, but Auntie Ray, she was like, I'll look, I'll take you down. I'll take you down if I have to. I love it. I love it. And it's so much fun to play a, a range. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So much fun. And even though she, you could tell that Auntie Ray was a caring woman, mm -hmm. but she just didn't take any mess. Mm. She would take you down. There was a scene where I got to tackle Larry David. David literally tackle him and take him down. Oh, I it love it. It was wonderful. <laughs> Did you ever have to take down Jamie Foxx on a Jamie Foxx show? I didn't take down Jamie Foxx, but there was a mugger. We had a scene where Aunt Helen had been mugged yes. and the mugger, but she gave him a clucking baby. <laughs> so that was good. So I guess that was where she got that Auntie Ray from, mm -hmm. to channel that part right, of herself right, 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 and right. just left that there, you know. So. That is so much fun. So um, what else have you been doing? I mean, you have, you're multi, I mean, multi-talented. You're a theater. You're an author, wow, and I want to go into all of these things, but I really want to touch in on your book. On my book, yes, because yes. there's something that spoke to me about it when mm, I when I when I looked okay. at your book. I am that I am, which is the title of it's your book. The title of my book, and you state that you're a late bloomer. Yes, explain that. Well, I consider myself a late bloomer because I was very much behind. I think the times. By the time I was even on my way to college, let's say I was 17, going on 12. I mean, that was just. <laughs> I don't know how it happened, but I led sort of a sheltered life mm -hmm. and there was so much that I didn't know. And so I started to learn things that people like kids in my high school that I graduated with, they, they knew things way before I did, mm. way before I did. I mean, I didn't start dating until I was in my late twenties. I mean, I, that get was, out. kid you not, had never had a date before then. Yes. So how did you yes. get your first date? I mean, I'm going well, off subject, but now I'm curious. <laughs> well, that, of course, now I've moved away from home. I'm living in New York. I'm in my twenties. Oh, yes. And this guy came to see me in the theater. Oh. And so he brought me these roses and left the next day. You know, it was that Cinderella kind of thing. Right. But oh, trust me, that Cinderella thing ain't real. <laughs> <laughs> He turned out not to be the one. Right, he was one of the frogs. He, he was one of the frogs, <laughs> not one of those shining armor knights. <laughs> and so I'm going to go back to your book. Yes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you talk about you have an eye towards what makes sense and should be kept and what doesn't make sense and should be discarded. Explain that. Yes. Well, as we journey in this life, mm -hmm. we're going to acquire a lot of information. 
through the eyes, mm -hmm. through the ears, you know what I mean? People telling you something, mm -hmm. things that you see, things that you witness, things that everybody is going to have an advice, everybody is going to have an opinion. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And what I've had to learn is find out what works for you. Mm. Take that make it work and discard the rest because sometimes the rest can be a distraction. Right. And the one thing I learned about distractions, which was a few years ago, I was, it was one of the, it was something as simple as I lost my uh, focus when I was going from one room to the next mm -hmm. in my own house. And I found myself in a different room than where I was planning to go and was standing there going, why did I come in here? What was I going to do? And it occurred to me, you got distracted just as you left the room. And that's what brought you back here. But this isn't where you were planning to go. And it just dawned on me, oh my goodness, that's what happens in life. We're on a journey. Yes. Either something, someone throws something in our way. We look to the left or we look to the right and we get distracted and we get off our path. Mm. And oftentimes what I found with that is once we get off the path, when we can't recall where we were going, we start this new path, which was not the path we were originally on. Mm -hmm. And then we start to get upset because we're like, well, I can't understand why I'm not getting to where I was trying to get to. You don't understand that you veered off the road and then you started something new. And in this new thing, you've got to finish it. You can't just all of a sudden start something and then go, no, 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 no. I need to go back to where I was. Right. You have to complete this. And then once you complete this, who knows how long that journey will take. Then at that point, it may come to you where you were supposed to be. Well, now, however far that journey in its completion took you, that's how long it's now going to take you to get back to where you were, where you were beginning to go. Perfect example. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a friend and this is how I talk to the young girls when I'm, I do a lot of talking you mm -hmm. know, to young people. And I say, let's say I gave you instructions and said, go out of the front door. When you get to the end of the driveway, go left. You're going to come to a corner, take a right. When you take that right, there's going to be new instructions for you when you get to the next corner. But before they could get to the end of the driveway, they got distracted. And instead of taking that right, they went left. Mm. You see, now what happened was, what happens is what I'm saying now, you've got to get back to the beginning of the journey. Mm -hmm. they, but when they go left and then they go left, they were way off the path. So the assignment where they were supposed to be going, they didn't get to. They got themselves involved in something else on the way. Right. That has to be completed. Wow. Whatever that is that you got yourself involved in, you have to get it completed in whatever way it means it has to be completed mm -hmm. in whatever you need to learn from it and whatever you need to give to it and whatever someone needs to get from you in it because you were there. Right. And then once you complete it, you got to find yourself back to where the driveway mm -hmm. before you can then begin the other journey to go back the correct way. So you're on three different journeys. There you go. You're on the, <laughs> you're on the original journey. The original you're on the journey. journey where you said, oh, I veered off and yes. I got to go back to the other. <laughs> yes. So how do you prevent yourself from getting distracted in this day and age? Because now we have social media, we have, we're attached to our phones. We have all of these advertisement billboards and everything. And, and even when you go online, you have pop-up stuff. Exactly. I mean, it's just like, it's just crazy. It, it is that I, because I didn't grow up in this day and age. And I know how hard it was for me to stay focused when I was growing up. You got to just keep telling yourself, get focused, mm -hmm. stay focused, stay focused. I say it to my young children that I'm mentoring, my goddaughter, especially. The, the texting, if you're supposed to be doing your homework and someone sends you a text, first of all, your phone should have been off. When you're doing your homework. When you're doing your homework, turn it off. Then that text can't come in and distract you. You have a, a place where you can get to do your homework. The computer is set, everything is set. Get your homework done. Even then, a thought, you'll be reading a passage and a thought will come to you that'll remind you of something else. Get the focus back. What are, you, what are you doing? Why are you sitting there? What are you there for? What are you in this space at this time for? Mm -hmm. Get that done and then do the next. That's, I'm not gonna tell you it's easy. Right. It is it, not It, it easy. sounds hard. It is. Because in me as an entrepreneur, I'm just like, okay, I got emailing <laughs> so, and yeah, looking at yeah, my yeah. phone. And with this multitasking, right. guys, guys, I'm getting hot, so I have to fan. Right. But, this, <laughs> but all this trying to do the multitasking, and that's one of the things that 
I'm finding that's challenging even to be focused mm -hmm. on because with the multitasking, you're now trying to be focused on maybe three or four different things. Right. Some people can do that. We, we, it's not that we can't, but you've got to train yourself and you've got to really train your mind. And then you've got to know your space, know what you can do, know what you can't do. So let me ask you, for someone who is multi-talented, such as yourself, mm -hmm. so you're an actress, you're a singer, yes. you're an entrepreneur, yes. you're a philanthropist. Yes. <laughs> how do you how does one stay focused for, you know, our viewers out here watching who have many different titles, different jobs? How does one stay focused where they're not going on several different paths because they have several different talents? Right, right. Well, perfect example. Um there are times you can use the talents that you have in what you're doing, in the project you're in. The Jamie Foxx show, for mm -hmm. example. I was able to sing on mm -hmm. that show, so I was able to use my singing talent. I was able to do the acting, and I was able to, at times when we were invited places, and I would always say to them, if it's about the youth, I'm your person, send me. And I'd get to go and speak to the youth, but it's all still in the umbrella of the show. Uh, do you see what I'm saying? What so saying. It, the focus is still definitely the show, but I get to also explore those different talents within that show. Mm -hmm. And then I did it until I was done with that show. So now let's say I just want to sing because mm -hmm. I've been doing that lately. But when I have the time to do that, then I'll find places where I can just go and sing. And then I just focus on I'm that, singing. focus on my music, focus on getting the music together, getting the band together and just practicing the singing and then go in and do the singing. That one's done. Okay, what's the next thing? When I was writing the book, I had to focus on just yes. that book. Yeah. Yes, on just getting, sitting down and making sure I got the book done. And it, was, it wasn't easy to do. That one wasn't easy because I write, when you're writing, you want to do other things. Right. But right, right, there are right. times you just have to, and what happens is it's not like I sat there 24 Four hours writing, I gave myself a, a, a lot of amount of time to write because sometimes then you'll come into this block. Mm -hmm. And so then you have to go and go for a walk, you know, right. go out, go right. talk to somebody, go see a movie, go do something different. But at least I stayed focused at that time that I was writing on what I was doing. And that helps you stay grounded in yes. everything so you're not pulled in every yes, all the different, all the di different, different directions. directions yes now so speaking true. of youth mm -hmm. i want to talk to you about strive ah tell us you, about you. strive and what you got going on there strive yeah, stands for students taking risks in visionary efforts ah, I love that. and i've partnered with two phenomenal instructors that are in georgia actually they're family members of mine hi guys <laughs> uh dr katrina english mm -hmm. and um uh, uh mrs Nicole Wesley, who's also working on her doctorate degree in education. Now, education is very important to me. Mm -hmm. My, when I even was doing the show, it used to be on Helen's rule, but it's basically Elia's rules, stay in school. Yeah. Elia's theme, follow your dream, but stay in school. And even when, I, when I'm saying stay in school, and even when you're following your dream, you're still in school because we're all still learning. Mm -hmm. This is an entire journey of learning, exploring, discovering, and just realizing who we are, right. embracing who we are and loving who we are, who we are individually, mm -hmm. who we are as a people, who we are as a nation, and who we are as a world. Mm -hmm. We're all in that process and in that journey of trying to understand that. I love it. So yeah, thank you, thank you. I was like, and thank you, thank you for channeling. <laughs> and I don't know anything. Trust me. Let me just let me just be very clear. I know absolutely nothing. I'm not professing to be perfect or to know anything. It's just that I have truly prayed a lot to be able to hear, and that's what I try to do. Listen. Right. carefully and make sure that I hear and try to stay on that journey that I came here and I was purposed to do. Mm -hmm. And some of it is listening and sharing. That's I what that. I do know. So and I'm sure yes, your students so, are just so I love them. So basically with Strive, I launched what's called the Loving Literacy Tour. I became upset that we were having such a high dropout rate of graduates. We weren't having high school graduates anymore. And I had a problem with that. And I said, well, if we can catch them first, I want to start with the young ones, catch them at an early age, give them, a, in, in, inspire within them a love for literacy, a love for learning, a love for school, that then they can take this with them as they graduate high school, right. as they graduate college, as they go back and get their doctorate, their master's degree, their doctor, they can get as many degrees as they want to be educated, but to learn to love the process of education, the process of learning and what knowing 
can do for you. Yeah, because you know, you know I, I have to admit, school is not, it's not fun. It's, it's not, not fun. No, it's, it's not, not fun. But if you can find a way to, to make, it, make fun it fun and exciting yes. and engaging, yes. then, then I, I'm all you're for in it, right? I'm in exactly. it. Exactly. Yes. And that's what I want. That's what I so want. So, how do you kids. find your students? There's a way that we could, somebody can sign up. How does that work for our viewers? Right now, it's with uh, the invitations of inviting me to the different schools. Now, I'll be going back to Georgia again to speak at some new schools when they, we start up the school term. And then I've already gotten an invitation here in LA to um, a, a young woman who's her daughter is just a, a princess of mine. They're mm -hmm. just, I call them all my babies. And she's invited me to come and talk at her school as well. What I'm trying to do before we even get into the schools, I'm with Dr. Katrina and with uh, Mrs. Wesley, I'm writing a book, we're two children's book that we're trying to get published. So mm -hmm. I'm waiting on the graphics. Once we get those uh, graphics done and uh, illustrations, I should say, done, we'll have those books published and I want them to go in with me in the schools, especially in the elementary schools. Nice. So you can yes. come and speak with elementary. Yes. All the way up to which, which right now, seniors? fifth grade. Fifth grade. Right now okay. I'm doing, um, uh, at least we, what did I do when I was at that? Uh, I think we had uh, kindergartens. I think we had kindergartners and in one school up through uh, third grade. And then the other school, they were all in different sections. And it was wonderful because I go, like, where are my kindergartners? Where are my first grades? Where are my, and it was wonderful to see them and have them all in one room. Now that was one awesome experience for me because what I have to say to the fifth graders, I've got to make the first graders and the kindergartners also understand, but I can't bore the fifth graders. Right. You understand? So that one was a challenge, but wow. it was wonderful. It was an absolute wonderful experience to realize that I could actually talk to all of them in the same room at the same time. And they walked away absolutely amazing. I got so many letters from them oh. as to what it did for them. And so don't make me cry. Don't make me cry. Okay, well, hey, hey, no, no cry. No well, cry. Do you so. do for high school students as well? I'm, that's what we'll, I'll be working on. Okay. Definitely. I'm working on that too, because I'm not leaving them out. Absolutely right, not. Right. Definitely not. Yes. So you are open to come and speak and then absolutely. they can go to your website, elliotenglish.com yes. and book um, you to come and speak yes. at the school. Well, actually they can do it at elliotenglish.com or to strive if they it will be better that they probably, we also, but I have a link for strive on the elliaenglish.com okay. so if they go on there it's the loving literacy page and if you click on that link for strive and get in touch with them then they will get in touch with me so that we can try to book it so i can be there i love but it yes absolutely i love it i love it <laughs> so what else is going on with you oh besides, i mean you're doing besides. so many things yeah i know <laughs> What did we did we play catch up? Was it we after did. Cur after Curb? Let's see. I did say my pro uh -huh. with uh, Will Farrell and yes. Andre Benjamin, who were just wonderful to work with. Then Good Luck Chuck with uh, Dane Cook and Jessica Alba, mm -hmm. and then I did Good Luck Charlie mm -hmm. on Disney, which was awesome. I played Mary Lou Wentz. I was a recurring character for that show, and that was they. We just actually finished this past year, so awesome. that was great. That was great to do. So now um, a couple of film projects are up, but it's something I can't talk about right now. Aww. I know. No, but well, I'll come back. Okay, you'll come okay, back. I'll come yes, back when, yes. when I can talk about those. But I'm also working on my music because mm -hmm. not only did I have the book, I have, which is I Am That I Am, and the subtitle is A Journey Through Adolescence. And mm. it's spelled A D D dash O L dash L E S S dash S E N S E. So it, I felt like, and the reason I put that is that when we come here, we really come here knowing a lot more than we know that we know, but because we're in that infancy stage, we're sort of like a blank page for to be written on. Mm -hmm. And so we're being added to, you know. And then as we grow up, I found that people used to say to me, oh my goodness, you're an old soul. You just, so somehow I guess we're beginning to embrace what we know uh, in combination with what we're learning. Mm -hmm. And then we're trying to understand who we are. And then at some point, you know, when we get around that teenage years, okay. we start losing things and we become less than who we really are. And so that's, that's why I call that the less, right. the, you know, as my mother used to say, the most sense I learned you, the less sense I have. <laughs> so at some point we got less sense too around those teenage years. But then as you become an adult, you kind of get sense. And that's when I was like, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You get it? So that's why it was add o less sense. <laughs> I love it. And that's what you're currently writing right now. That one's the one that, that's done. That's, that's the name done. of that okay. book. And so I'm currently writing um, a sequel to that one, okay. which is basically it's um I loved writing it, create doing creative writing and I love 
poetic, you know, poetry because I like to write music and write songs. So a lot of it is done poetically, you know, with some like lyrics. And I just took some of a lot of the writings that I was journaling when I was trying to understand what was going on in my life and just experiences in my life. And there were some things that weren't added because it just it wasn't I wasn't led to put those in. And so now because if it was, to be honest with you, it was one of the hardest things I had to do mm -hmm. because what um, inspired me to write the book to begin with. I was, it was one of those times I was having one of my own, oh, why am I here day? What's going on? What do I do? Did I get off my path? What is this journey? And so I went and I started grabbing some of my own journals and mm -hmm. I started reading them and I was being encouraged by things that I had written in my own journal. Mm -hmm. And this, I want to say this thought, but I'm not that smart. So I, I would say that. Yes, you are. Oh, okay. well, please just yes, right. you are. Oh. yes, you are. Yes, you are. All right, but I don't pretend. Put it, I don't pretend to be that right, smart. Right. How about that? Can I say it like that? I don't pretend to be that wise, but I believe it was downloaded into me saying, "What if you could help one somebody yes. by sharing this? If it's helping you, it might be able to help someone else." And I remember thinking, "No, this is my personal writing. This is these are things that I don't tell anybody. These are things that I just tell me." Yeah. And it said, "But what if you could help someone?" Mm. Because that's what really life is. What that's what it's about. about. And then that's when I had to say, OK, I'll do it. And that's how I began on the journey of writing that book. And that's why when I caught up, talk about being a late bloomer, that's how it, why it was a play on words with adolescence, mm -hmm. because it was the fact that I was a late bloomer. Yeah. I was still dealing with my adolescence, even as I was going through this particular journey. Mm -hmm. So there were certain things that I was trying to listen as to what should be put in, what shouldn't be as I'm trying to help someone that what, how should this particular book be put together. And so the next one, it's like, and plus I became braver after that book was published, if that's such a, I became more brave or braver Not, yes. or bravest, you get it, um, to now be able to add certain things that just, just out of nervousness for my own self going, yeah. maybe I shouldn't talk about that or maybe I shouldn't tell. I mean, one thing that I never told, <clears throat> which I can share, which will be in the other book, but it's being done the same way I write though, that poetic creative mm -hmm. writing. Um, when I was about seven years old, I was uh, molested. Mm. And it was, it took me years to get over that. And I never told anyone, never told, so not even my parents. Mm. And it happened, you know, it was a, a classmate's stepfather that it happened with. And I just, I was afraid to tell anyone because first of all, I didn't want to get in any trouble. Right. And then I didn't know what he would do to me if they came after him. Right. So I never told. So it wasn't until I was an adult and my mom was like, why didn't you tell me? And I said, I just, I was just afraid. So I never wrote about it. And so I never also let myself deal with what it did to me, mm. what it caused to happen in my life. Um, so that's what, those are some of the things I'm putting in the book now and experiences where I had, I was a young girl and I'd just gone off to college and s for some strange reason, I would rub people the wrong way. I mean, people, if I smile, they were like, you always have to be so happy. Right. <laughs> it was like, I'm afraid to go in a room. I'm afraid to talk to people. Right. And then there was once this deacon in the church and he was like, don't come in here with that college education. And I had been invited to come and help them with their um, baby choir that they were putting together. They knew how much I loved music. They knew how much, I mean, I love to play music and I could teach music and teach them to sing. Mm -hmm. So I was invited to come and do it, but then I was jumped on and ridiculed. And so I wrote about that. So it was like, you know, it, but it, it's not, I don't tell it the way I'm telling this story. Um, I think mine in, in the, about the molestation, which it was a little bit more than that, but it works better for me to say molestation. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but it was like, why? Yes. Why did why did you have to do it to me? Why right. did you have to violate my innocence? Why did you have right. to take that away? So I write about that. So those are some of the things that are going to be in the sequel to the I am that I am. That's, yeah, I so. just want to give you a hug. I'll I know. Take it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, congratulations with you with that. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to switch something a little bit more yes. happy. More happy <laughs> because I like to be yes. happy. <laughs> So what were, we're going to go back to the Jamie Foxx show because it's one of my absolute favorite shows. Thank you. What was one of the most memorable moments on that show that you can share with us? Oh my goodness. I know I there were so, so many, many. You but I'm know sure, I, do. I know you do, but there's something because we we loved that show. We watched, I mean, Jamie is a superstar now. Yes, and he is. I just that's know my there's, baby. I, yes, that's my baby. Oh. All right, Jamie, you know it. I'll never forget 
when we were shooting the pilot and I'll never, first of all, I'll never forget my audition with him. Um, it was the most wonderful audition I'd ever been on because I felt that he, I love how he ad libs and I love how he just, he'll take you someplace. But if you're willing to go, you get to go on this beautiful roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely amazing. So when we did the audition, I was looking forward to that for the show. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what we did. But I know when we were shooting that pilot, I looked at him and said, this is going to be a great show. You are going to be a big star. And I, I know he was looking at me like, this lady is crazy. But I remember telling him that and oh. I truly believed it. And I wanted that for him. And still, I am so proud of him. Mm -hmm and so happy for him. He doesn't even realize, he hasn't even reached his peak yet. He's got so much more to offer. He does. So much more to offer. I mean, we used to sit and talk sometimes and talk about his grandmother and mm -hmm. talk about when he was playing piano and things like that. And I remember when I watched his very first HBO special and he was playing the piano and doing his comedy routines. And I and I loved him before I did the show. Remember, I got to watch him on In Living Color. Right. And everybody we loved him. We all watched him on In Living Color. I won't do the lips. <laughs> We won't, yeah, we won't do those won't do lips. lips. We won't do, right. I'm like, I don't even think I could, those Wanda lips. Yes. But I loved him and I loved his that. And then I loved, he was also on, oh my goodness, like, it's going out of my head. But it was another show that he played a character. He was like this next door neighbor. And so I loved watching him. So it was a blessing to be able to do that show with him and those wonderful five seasons. Yeah. But one of my special moments is something that he would do specifically for me, but you guys didn't get to see. So it was always off camera. Oh, exclusive. And he, we got exclusive, an exclusive. Yeah, an exclusive. <laughs> and for whatever reason, he we would always do like he. I loved gymnastics, so he would always like pretend to be doing these uh, the pommel things for me on the couch. He would do the edge of the couch and do the pommel, and he'd always fall. I mean, I would laugh so hard sometimes. I would really, I would be on the floor in tears. He would make me laugh every time he did that for me, and I know that was that was for Elliot. Okay, Elliot, uh, ready, ready. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> was so funny so funny he pretended to be like one of the guys on the pommel right, horse and right. he was really doing it and then he slips and misses it breaks his breaks his face it, it would just be he would every time and it would just be something, act it out, act it out the entire time act out the pain act out it was so <laughs> funny i don't know jamie do you remember doing that do you remember doing that for me i used to love it and that was that's one of my most memorable moments other off the off screen we had so many more though mm -hmm. because we were like a family Family. We right. really were a family, and I still I still bother them today. Jamie, he keeps changing his number because he knows I'll keep calling. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. I still say hi to Braxton, to Christopher. I still say hi to Garcelle. I'm trying to find Garcelle. I mean, uh, to find Garrett. I think he changed his number on me too. I think I was harassing them all too much. <laughs> Because I'll call in a minute going, it's me, right, Elia. Elia, right. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> well, that is so good that you guys had a family. It was like a family affair. It was a family when affair. you guys were on set. It really was. That's wonderful. Yes. And everybody loved coming on the set because they felt the love. They felt the family. And we, if you came on, you became a part of the family. You mm -hmm. were embraced as part of the family. And so. it makes going to work joyful. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, you got me sweating in my I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Elliot, thank you so much for being with me thank and sharing you. your story with me today. Thanks it for having me. It was just so me. inspiring, so inspirational and fun and uplifting. Yay. And I thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching Phenomenal Women. I'm your host, Ashita Andre. And thank, thank you again, Elliot, for being with us. And I look forward to inspiring you next week. From producers Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African-American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. Excited. Didn't let me get way, yeah. too, way, too, way too excited. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals. Thanks for watching Black Hollywood Live on YouTube. For more in depth interviews and news, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion in the comment section below here. See you soon, everyone. Bye.